So you are thinking of weight loss surgery? Do you know what to do? Do you know what to expect? It can be a long or short process depending. And during this video, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what we do at Beltry Bariatrics to get you ready for your surgery. Hi, this is Dr. Beltry from Beltry Bariatrics and uh, thank you for tuning into our YouTube channel. And uh, today I'm gonna to be talking about what to expect. Let's say you are considering weight loss surgery or bariatric surgery what to expect, what the process is like. The process can be short in some individuals and it can be longer in others, depending on many, uh, many things. And when I say short, I mean, I'm still talking about weeks, okay? Because sometimes the preparation can take a lot uh, longer. But normally, first of all, I, I know that when patients come to see me because they're contemplating weight loss surgery, I understand that it has been in their mind for a while. I mean, truth is that studies have shown that most patients, by the time they come to see a surgeon for weight loss surgery, they have been thinking about it for the last two or five years, which is fine because it gives you time to research the different procedures and uh, what surgeons you would like to perform your surgery and so on and so forth. But by the time patients come to me, just like with any other bariatric surgeon, they have done a lot of research. They understand that now this is what they want to do because it's been in their mind for so long. And I do like that because for me, and, and, and I can tell you that uh, my colleagues, my friends that are bariatric surgeons will tell you the same thing also, that we, we love a patient that is well-educated because that way it makes our job easier, right? I don't like when someone comes to me, for example, and I ask them, well, you know, uh, what surgery are you thinking about? And they're like, well, you know, you're the surgeon, you, you tell me, I'm like, I mean, I, I don't mind educating patients, but I like uh, uh, people to take their initiatives and, 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 and educate themselves. And so when they come to me, I can, me or other members of my staff can actually uh, help uh, that person through the process. And I don't mind giving you my own opinion, of course, but it's very good. Uh, it helps a lot to have a well-educated uh, patient. So patients come to me. So you come to, to us uh, because you're considering a weight loss procedure. Of course, the first thing that happens is that there's an initial consultation. And during the initial consultation, we look at your medical history. You look at your, we look at your surgical history. We, we look at the type of medications you are taking. And, uh, and then, of course, we sit down and we discuss what procedure we think may be the best procedure for you. It turns out, to be quite honest, that 90% of the time, I do agree with the procedure that patients are already thinking about because they've done their research. However, there's that 10% of the time when I say, no, I think you will do better with a different procedure. And then, of course, I will intervene and, and, and let them know why. The procedures that we choose has to do a lot with uh, patient history. Uh, whether it's a gastric sleeve, whether it's a gastric bypass, whether it's a duodenal switch, uh, has to do with patient history, past surgical history, uh, and, and things of that uh, nature. Just to give you a quick uh, example, someone that has severe acid reflux, taking multiple medications. Well, truth is that if you do a gastric sleeve in a patient like that, the, the, the acid reflux is gonna get worse and the best way to treat it would be with the uh, Ruin Y uh, gastric uh, bypass. And I will tell the patient, educate them as to why the gastric bypass is the best because it's one of the best anti-reflux procedure there is. It will get rid of your acid uh, uh, reflux. The uh, other things is medical history. There are patients that have a long history of type two diabetes, for example, or already taking insulin. And if you've been diabetic for uh, more than five years, type two diabetes, the sleeve might not remove your type two diabetes completely 100% where the gastric bypass may. So those are the things that we take into, into consideration to choose the weight loss procedure. Once we all agree that this is the procedure that you will do best uh, with and so on and so forth, then there's other consultations that I expect the patients to go through. Number one, I want my patient to do a nutritional consultation and we give you all the information. I have nutritionists on my staff that will do the nutritional consultation. The, the nutritional consultation, basically, the nutrition is going to help you uh, to prepare from, for the surgical procedure from the nutritionist standpoint. She's gonna to talk to you about portion control, how your portions are going to be, what kind of uh, uh, your, your post-op uh, stages or post-op diet stages after the surgery, how to prepare foods at home, and uh, finally, your pre-op weight loss diet, which helps you get ready for the surgery. Normally, I tell my patients, you know, don't just do one consultation with the nutritionist and uh, 
before the surgery, have your surgery and, and, and forget about the nutritionist. I, I normally encourage my patient to continue seeing the nutritionist three, four times after their surgery so that she can help them change dietary habits, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, it's a combination of the surgical procedure and a good uh, lifestyle. And of course, eating healthy, knowing what foods you ch choose, all these things are very important. So therefore, I do encourage my patients and encourage you, whether you're doing the surgery with us or with somebody else, continue seeing the nutrition until you completely change your dietary habits and you have adopted a good, uh, healthy lifestyle. This prevents weight regain in the future and, and so on. Also, a consultation with the psychologist. And the consultation with the psychologist, basically, uh, it's so that I, I want to make sure there's no eating disorders issue, right? There are individuals that can suffer from eating disorders like anorexia, bulimia, food addiction, drug addictions, things of that nature. Also, we want to make sure that uh, patient, if there's any psych history, that is being actively treated and it's been stable uh, for a while. And of course, that the patients understand and knows that what has the right expectation from the surgery. There's a lot of things that the surgery will uh, give you, and I want to make sure that you understand and you have the right expectation from uh, the procedure. So this is why I like my patients to have their, their psychological consultation. Then after that, uh, when the patient normally leaves the first consultation, the pre-op diet begins pretty much. Uh, I tell my patients to begin a, a pre-op uh, uh, diet to prepare for surgery. And normally this uh, pre-op diet consists of a liquid protein meal replacement, right? We ask our patient to replace one to two of their meals with a protein shake. They have, for example, a protein shake in the morning, nothing else, one uh, for lunch. They might have a salad in between if they get hungry. And then for dinner, you can have all your lean meats, fish, chicken with your veggies and, and salads and so on. No, no, no sugars, no bread, pasta, cake, cookies, anything like that. These to prepare for the surgery. Sometimes I tell my patient they can make, lunch can be their heavy meal and then have a protein shake for dinner. The whole idea with this is to decrease the size of your liver. A lot of my patients already have fatty liver decrease the size of the liver, decrease some of the intra-abdominal fat, and make the surgery quicker, easier to recover, quicker, easier, less complication during the procedure. So that is very important, the pre-op diet. How long you do this pre-op diet depends. Most individuals, two, three weeks is enough. Truth is, I operate on patients that are four, five, six, seven hundred pounds. Those patients take longer to prepare. We're talking about not weeks, but months maybe, when I feel that they are ready to uh, undergo the procedure. So, but I will say that uh, the vast majority of the time, 80, 90% of the time, uh, two to three weeks of a, of a high protein uh, diet is usually enough to get you ready for a uh, weight loss procedure. Then of course, as the time of the surgery is approaching, we do labs where we check, make sure there is no anemia, make sure there's no deficiency of any kind. And then of course, uh, depending on your medical history, we send you for uh, medical clearances. Medical clearance is for your medical doctor checks and make sure your diabetes is well controlled if you have diabetes. Your blood pressure is well controlled, you're taking your blood pressure meds. They do EKGs to make sure there hasn't been any changes in your EKGs and your, your heart uh, functions and, and things uh, like that. And then you come one last time to see us again where we do a full consent. This is when we sit down and we go into details about the risk and benefits of the procedure. We go into, in, into in, in more details and the patient signs uh, the consent for uh, the, the surgery. Normally, when I do the surgery at my surgery center, we do the procedure, I see you two days later, two, three days later in the office. Uh, when we see you in the hospital, because you spend a night in the hospital, uh, we see you uh, one to two weeks after the procedure. This is, this is the normal sequence of events, what happens uh, when you come to see us uh, for a consultation. It's very similar to what most bariatric surgeons do uh, here in the United States. I hope this was helpful. Again, this is Dr. Beltry from Beltry Bariatrics. You can always reach us, you can reach me, send me an email or give us a call. If you have any questions, we're more than happy to help you uh, through your process. Thank you.